Today with Joseph Prince. Only God can heal, but we can represent Him. And that's why we use the name of Jesus. When Jesus spoke to the Gadarene demoniac, Jesus only had to speak one word, go, and all the demons left. You and I have to act. We gotta say, go in Jesus' name. And the authority of Jesus' name is what makes the whole thing work. As the days of Lot and as the days of Noah, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, the world will be like the conditions then. But today I'm not talking about Lot, I'm talking about Noah. Noah, what happened was that at, at his time, the Bible says there were angels, fallen angels, okay? By the way, angels can take on human form and look like you. Yes, there are Chinese angels, there are Indian angels, amen? There are American angels. If they want to take on, take on human form, they can. Remember the, in, book, uh, in the book of Hebrews, it says, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for some have entertained angels unaware. That means they can take on human form for a purpose, amen, to deliver a message, to protect you or whatever, and then disappear. Amen. I, I, I could describe to you in my own life one or two instances, amen, and in people's life and all that, how at the right time, all right, even recently my wife would tell you how we were stuck deep in a forest, quite deep in a forest, and out of nowhere, someone came. We were stuck, surrounded by mad dogs, amen, and someone came in all the way to us and brought us out on a motorbike, a Chinese man. After that, you see him no more, all right? Chinese angel. <laughs> of course, every morning I wake up, I see an angel. Come on. Amen. At least I think so, right? You are an angel from above. All right, all right, praise God. Anyway, what happened is that the Bible says that fallen angels took on the form of humans to cohabit with the women on earth. Amen. In a way, they were also, in a sense, forced against their own will. You can say it's rape, right? What the fallen angels did was something very evil that the Bible says today, these fallen angels are kept in chains of everlasting darkness in a place in hell called Tartarus, a prison place in hell. These angels today are no longer around. Okay, they are bound. So women, breathe. However, the days of Noah is upon us in that there are alien beings. They are usually fallen angels. Many of the demons, we talk about demons, they are actually fallen angels. Amen? And they try to make it appear like they are beings from another planet. They are not. They are fallen, they are fallen angels. These angels that cohabit with the women, they produce giants. We have a verse here that says, uh, there were giants on the earth in those days and also afterwards. So before the flood, in those days of the flood, and also afterwards means after the flood, there was another eruption. When the sons of God, now this word sons of God here, in the Hebrew, we studied carefully, it refers to angels and fallen angels, not, not the good angels, amen? They came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of all men of renown. And next verse says, they are very wicked. The Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So these angels cohabit with the women on earth and they produce uh, giants. So that's why when they, when they, when, when you, whenever you hear about uh, giant skeletons and all that, this is real. There were giants on the earth. And that's where all the, the mythology, the Greek mythology of cyclops and giants and all that came about. Usually, truth becomes uh, perverted down through the centuries, amen? And what you have is mythology, but it's based on truth. Even the epic of Gilgamesh, a very ancient, you know, writing, talks about a universal flood. Even the, the annals of Chinese history talks about universal flood. Amen. And it's very clear that Something happened that God's heart was grief. Human beings were not complete human beings anymore. There was one family, it, it was so corrupted, the eruption was so widespread that flesh has corrupted its way all through the earth that finally only one stock of human race was left. Noah, Mrs. Noah, his three sons, 
Shem, Ham, Japheth, and their wives. Eight people in a boat. That's why the ancient Chinese character for boat has eight strokes. You look carefully. Or dots, whatever you call it. Eight in a ship. And the news spread all over the earth. Because one, once upon a time, there's one language. And it's Chinese. No, it's not. It's not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, the Chinese language came out of it, of course. But there were eight people. And that's why, listen carefully, God preserved Noah, not because he's especially holy. All right, the rest all corrupted. This is a pure human stock. And God put him uh, in the earth because God wanted to depopulate the earth, but God destroyed the entire, this uh, hybrid creatures and Nephilim and all that, all right, by a flood, by a universal flood. Do you understand that? But God preserved the human race, praise God. Amen. The enemy was always there behind my shoulder saying, you messed up again. How can you be, you know, living up to God's expectations and standards? I was always feeling condemned. I never was seeing in my life the things that the Bible actually talked about. And what really set me free, or at least in the right path, was believing that, you know what? It doesn't matter how many times you mess up, I'm still going to love you. And that inspiration, that power of grace, really provided me the opportunity to see the light at the end of the tunnel. When I heard Joseph Chris, I just began to know that this was a missing link. This was the key, I have found it. And every time I hear him, I just, I just get freer and freer and freer. If the gospel of grace has impacted your life, I would like to invite you to join us as a grace legacy builder. Let's advance the gospel of grace together. Visit the link on your screen to be part of leaving a legacy of grace today. What the devil was out to do was to destroy the seed that was promised when the devil tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden, all right, and, and Eve uh, 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 fell, Adam fell also, Adam ate the fruit and, and all disobeyed God, and, and the devil heard the promise of God, the very first prophecy of the Bible. God says, from the woman's seed, now women don't have seed, man has the seed, but it's a prophecy of the virgin birth. From the woman's seed will come a champion, and he will crush your head. Out of the woman's seed, the woman's seed will crush your head, God told Satan. So from then on, he, he, was, he didn't know. The devil is not all-knowing. Our God is. The one who dwells in you, the Holy Spirit, he's all-knowing. The devil is not. But he has been around for a long time. He understands human nature. He knows how to get you. The devil hates you, my friend, because you are made in the image of God. Don't think for one moment he offers you something without snapping down the, the trap. And he has you where he wants you to be. He hates you. He comes to steal. Jesus says he comes to steal from you, steal your health, steal your relationship, steal your peace of mind. He comes to kill and then he comes to destroy. Jesus, says, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen, church? So what happened? God flooded the earth. And God, uh, my, my, I have a sermon called Noah, the real story. It's a good sermon for you to get. You want to find out more about this. That people think that you know Noah brought in all the big animals because space. In Noah's ark, no, my friend, all the animals came in young, male and female. All of them came in young, and you know the dogs. Not every species of dogs, because all the species of dogs can be proven to come from one one pair of dogs. Within their genes are all the different Dalmatians and and uh, or, uh, 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 you know you have the different types of dogs and all that. All that comes from one pair. Amen. So God brought them in. How about the largest animals? Even the dinosaurs, right? If, the, if dinosaurs uh, were destroyed in the flood, many of them were destroyed in the flood. But if there were dinosaurs after the flood, they, they would come in small. Amen. I personally believe they were destroyed outside Noah's Ark. Apostle, what, what, what the largest animal? What largest animal? The whale. And there's a problem. How can, how can Noah bring the whale in the ark? <laughs> they swam outside, bro. <laughs> all the marine animals, <laughs> all the fishes were outside. It was their happy hour. <laughs> it wasn't judgment on them. Amen. So, and, and then God promised when Noah came out of the ark, by the way, animals, some people say, wow, that, 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 that whole Noah's Ark thing must sting badly, man. No, you see, listen, friend. It's only one pair of each, and not only that, animals can hibernate. They can hibernate for months. They don't have to eat much. And as people, when there's danger, they can make themselves hibernate. They don't need to move much. 
They don't have to eat much. Are you following what I'm saying so far? And, and, and Noah was in the ark only for months. Amen. And then from, from this, right, when they came up the ark, Noah and his family populated the entire earth once again. But the Bible says what? There were, uh, verse 4, there were giants in those days and also afterwards. Afterwards means what? There was another eruption. They're not supposed to. The fallen angels are not supposed to, all right? But there was another eruption. So these two group of angels now, they're no more on earth. They are now chained in darkness. But until the, another eruption after the flood, and this eruption, God promised you will never flood the earth again, right? So how? God promised Noah he will never again flood the earth. I think the devil was jumping. He said, let's cause the fallen angels to cause another outbreak. A hybrid of giants. Half human, half. And this time God says he will never flood the earth again. But then God raised Israel. And through Joshua, and especially David, he destroyed all the the Amalekites, the Anakims and all that. These are actually hybrids. And that explains, people don't understand why, why the violence, why, why God commanded uh, David to destroy this entire village, for example. Uh, they were not complete humans. There was a hybrid, they lived. Goliath is a good example. Goliath was so tall, so huge. And some of them have, have uh, 12 like, uh, extra fingers, extra toes. Remember that? Or king of Bashan, they're all descendants of the giants. And who was called? God cannot flood the earth again, but God raised David to destroy them. Hence the story of David and Goliath. But are they still around, Pastor Prince? Don't look around. Some people are just tall. <laughs> Amen? But I'll tell you this. As the days of Noah are, uh, so the days of coming of Solomon. So that was, we look at the skies, and, and people, was, Bible says, Jesus says, they will see things in heaven, fearful sights in heaven, and they cannot explain. Now they, they are trying to explain by calling it unidentified flying objects, okay? They are nothing more than demons in the sky. Demons trying to tell you that there's another world and, and uh, there are other galaxies and there are other, uh, other beings, aliens living in all these planets and, and Hollywood instead of Holy Word. You must get your, your truth from the Holy Word, amen? Hollywood will bombard you with all kinds of alien shows and all that so that even the rapture is explained away. They, they got a movie last time called The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. No, 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 no. <laughs> so when we disappear, the Bible says it will happen so fast in an atomic second, no one will see us go. It's not like, yeah, bro, amen? Ay, when I get raptured, I'll grab a few sinners, one hand here, one hand here, pull them up halfway and then says, will you accept Jesus or I let go? <laughs> it won't happen like that. It will happen so fast. Before you know it, your body is changed. You feel so alive and you'll never grow old again, never have any sickness again, never feel bored again, never feel depressed again in that body. You cannot, you cannot feel those things because you are now in that brand new body. Forever young, forever healthy. Amen. We are waiting for that to happen. That's called the rapture of the church. Jesus coming back and the only thing left for us that He bought for us at the cross is a brand new body. It's a brand new body. Smile your neighbor and say, there's hope for you, bro. There's hope for you. Amen. Turn to another neighbor beside you and say, there's hope for your face. <laughs> I'm just kidding, okay? I don't have the power of healing. If I have the power of healing, will I look like this? I'll lay my hand on my face. Don't laugh so loud. I'll lay my hand on your face also, maybe. Amen? So the power is not resident. It's not at our will. Amen? We cannot will healing. Only God can heal, but we can represent Him. And that's why we use the name of Jesus. When Jesus spoke to the Gadarian demoniac, He was so possessed with evil spirits, demons spoke out of Him. Jesus only had to speak one word, go, and all the demons left. You and I have to add, we got to say, go in Jesus' name. And the authority of Jesus' name is what makes the whole thing work. Amen? Now, if I write a, 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 a check to you, and I put down there $1 million in my bank account, right? And Joseph Prince, amen, you take that money and you rejoice. Don't rejoice, my friend. It will bounce. Why? Even though my name is there, it's not a matter of my name. It's a matter of what? How much money I have behind this name. Am I right? Am I right? Now, supposing the richest man, all right, in Singapore would write you a check 
and you know his name. Amen? You can rejoice. It's not just the name. It is what's behind the name. Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore, therefore, use my name. Because all authority is behind the name of Jesus. If Jesus has all authority, Satan has how much? Zero. Amen. Are you learning, church? So, what happened is that there was, when, when the, until the flood happened, there was no rain. There was no rain on the earth. All right, today, generation, you ask them, I mean, back then you ask them, you know what's rain? They don't know what's rain. Rain never fell until the flood. Amen. Today's generation don't know what's rain. They think rain is a, a person. <laughs> a dancer, you know. But back then, they, they, they didn't know what's rain. God says, I'll rain upon the earth. But where will the rain come? From the, the canopy, the firmament, the Bible says, right? The firmament were, were, dis, were broken and waters came in. And that's why before the flood, they will live hundreds of years. Nine, Adam lived 900 over years and Seth hundreds of years. Noah even hundreds of years. But when, when the canopy, it was a canopy protecting the earth from all the harmful rays of the sun and all that, that was broken. And the Bible says, water fell in, all right, into the earth. And from the depths of the earth, water gushed out. And that's where the flood waters get its waters from. That for, for it to uh, be removed, condensation alone is not enough. God has to tilt the earth. And that's why the earth is tilted. If the earth is upright, it's exactly 360 days. That's why the Jewish people until today, their calendar is 360 days. It's based on the original calendar. Ours is tilted. The earth is tilted to congeal. Congeal means to ice up all the excess water, North Pole and South Pole. Do you know, for the first time, because it's tilted, the distance from the sun, you have four seasons. If you tilt the earth back, the whole earth will flood again. But God promised the earth will never flood again. Amen? The earth is exactly where it's supposed to be. Scientists tell us, not thousands of miles, okay? Not even hundreds of miles. Just a few miles nearer to the sun will burn. Just a few miles away from the sun, we'll freeze. We're exactly where we're supposed to be. You tell me there's no God? The Bible says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So all men sin, and, and God was preserving the line for his, his son to come true, the promised champion, the crusher of the serpent's head. And finally, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus came, and, and the, the devil lost. Amen, praise the Lord. Jesus came to die. He's the only one who came to die. He died for our sins. Amen. On that cross, God took your sins. Jesus had no sins of His own. He never knew any sin. He never did any sin. In Him is no sin. Amen. <clears throat> and the Bible says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Written, listen, written 3,500 years ago when Moses was a secretary and God wrote through him the book of Leviticus. And the book of Leviticus says the life of the flesh the life of the human body is in the blood. That means if you lose your blood, you lose your life. And that's how uh, George Washington died because uh, in those days, in his, the first president of the uh, US, they believed in bloodletting. Whatever disease you have, you wouldn't have sore throat, nor that he had actually a, a, a throat uh, condition. But they believed that you let go of your blood, all right, you let go of the disease. Unfortunately, you, you let go too much, you die. In the same room, there was a Bible where he died. The Bible says in the book of Leviticus, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Amen. One of the oldest books in the Bible before Jesus came in, the, in, in human form. All right? Isaiah tells us that he talked about the circle of the earth long before man knew earth was round. In fact, even until uh, uh, as recently as a few centuries ago, amen, man thought that you, you, you go by ship far enough, you'll drop. So no one dare venture further. Amen? But the Bible is more advanced than all of them put together that from the time of prophet Isaiah. More than 2,000 years ago, the Bible says the circle of the earth. Job, the oldest book in the Bible says, God hangs the earth upon nothing. Hmm? They used to think Atlas carries a man called Atlas, a giant, carries the whole thing on his back. Another group believes a turtle carried the whole thing on his back. The Bible says he hangs the earth upon nothing. The oldest book in the Bible, the book of Job, tells us that. 
tells us that men will identify each other by their hands, their fingerprints. Long before fingerprints was detected as a means of identification because it's unique. No one will ever have your set of fingerprints, ever. You are unique. God made you special. Don't let anyone make you a face in the crowd. You are not. God sees you individually. He numbers the hairs of your head individually. No hair also, He knows the number zero. God knows you personally. Can I have a good day, man? Okay. I want to share with you real quick a principle of studying the Bible before you close. Okay? Are you with me so far? All right, let's look at uh, the principle of Bible names. All right, names in the Bible carry meanings. Now, after this service, all right, please don't go and change your name. You don't have to change your name. In the Bible days, you got even change people's name because there's a meaning for their life, for their purpose. But if you want to study and find more truth in the Bible, sometimes it is not uh, out there on the, on the surface. You can't see the truth. But if you study the names, it can yield rich profits for you if you study God's Word. So one of the principles, and I, find, I, I was quite astounded by the fact that many people teach to study the Bible. They don't teach the significance of names in the Bible. Okay, there's one chapter I'm going to show you a case in point. And, uh, uh, you know, God showed this to me in the early 1990s. I wasn't even married yet at the time. And um, uh, since then, this has gone far and wide. But let me just share with you real quick, okay? There's a chapter, for example, there's no redundant chapter or verse in the Bible. Everything is there for a purpose. Like if you read Genesis chapter 5, the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 5, you'll find this. It tells us the first man, all the days that Adam lived was 930 years and Adam died. Seth, Adam's son, lived 105 years and begot Enosh. After he begot Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and had sons and daughters and then he died. And then Seth uh, brought forth Samo, right? Uh, uh, Canaan and all the rest and Mahalalil and follow on all the way, this chapter 5 alone, all the way to Noah. And Noah, it stopped. Because why? At Noah's time was when the flood came. Amen? And after Noah's generation, by the way, there's also a, a, a man called Pelag. His name is called Pelag because in his day, the continents were divided. His name, his name means division. And you look carefully at, 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 at uh, South America, you look at Africa, you can join them together, even the top also, which means once upon a time, the whole earth was one landmass. So earth, the bottom was, was during the flood and all that, it broke apart, releasing poisonous gas. The firmament, the rechia in Hebrew, was broken. The canopy that protected man from the harmful rays of the sun was broken. And that's why after the flood, instead of hundreds of years, man's life became halved. And then another halved. All the way until what God said to uh, uh, Noah, man's days will be 120 years. And then in our day and age, it's come all the way to, you live 70, 80, it's pretty good, right? But you know, the Bible says that those people who are under God's wrath in Psalms 90, those who are under God's wrath, the, the people who are in the wilderness, and the word wrath is used more than one time. So specifically, it's for the people who are under God's wrath. They live 70 years and by reason of strength, 80 years. But we are not under God's wrath. We are under God's grace. Through Jesus Christ, we are under God's favour, under God's grace. We'll never be under God's wrath. Are you hearing? We don't live in Psalms 90, we live in Psalms 91. And Psalms 91 says, with long life, I will satisfy you. You're not satisfied at 80 years old, tell the Lord, I'm not satisfied, go on to 90. And 90 to 100 if you want. Amen. The criteria is your satisfaction. God says, with long life, I will satisfy him. Amen. Not excited? <laughs> Angels taking down notes, you know. Those who say amen, God take down notes, you know. With long life will I satisfy him. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So everything goes back to the original plan, back to Eden. You want to learn God's plan. It's always good, amen, to follow God's plan. For example, if you make a car, you manufacture a car and all that, and you try to put orange juice into the place where you're supposed to put uh, petrol or fuel, right? It won't work. Put any other liquid, it won't work. You can argue it's not politically correct. It's more correct to put orange juice. I don't care how, how you argue it. The way it's functioned must go back to the manufacturer's handbook. He knows how it functions best. You want to learn what a man, woman is all like, are, 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 are to be like? Go back to the Garden of Eden. 
God made man and woman, male and female. There's no confusion. Can I speak a word to the man? To be a male is a matter of birth. To be a man is a matter of choice. In these last days, don't let anyone rob you of your masculinity. Be a man and don't be ashamed.